After the plant comes the takeoff. Now Aaron has gotten his plant at the back of the box. He's ready to take off because he's pushed that pole. He's continuing to push that pole up. He's going to try and throw that pole on its back, push the pole on its back into the pit. The moment he leaves the ground, that's known as the takeoff. Hopefully the pole at that time will bend inward. He'll follow the bending pole right after it and go into his takeoff. Due to his ineffective approach run and plan, this Volta has no chance to have an explosive takeoff. As a matter of fact, because he took such a long last step, it's downright dangerous. The Elite Volta has had an excellent approach run and an excellent plan, so he should have a great takeoff. Notice how he, when he does take off, he continues to push the pole upward. He also explodes off the ground very much like a runner. He looks just like he's taking off the ground in that same great upright position that a runner would have or a long jumper leaving the ground. The drive swing is perhaps one of the shortest phases of the ball, but one of the most critical. The drive swing starts immediately following the takeoff and continues as long as the vaulter's forward and upward momentum continues. It is extremely important for the chest to drive forward and stay balanced over the hips while the trail leg is back. If the previous stages, the run, plant, and takeoff, have not been properly done, there is no drive swing. It is very important during the drive swing that the vault does not push or pull the pole, rather follow its inward bending action. The swing up follows the drive swing. In the swing up, the vaulter harnesses the tremendous power that was created during the takeoff and the drive swing. The vaulter simply becomes a gymnast on a high bar executing a giant swing. The power of the swing keeps the pole bending and moving towards the vertical. Warning, do not row, pull, or manipulate the pole in any way. Do not interfere with the natural swinging action that has been created through the drive swing. The swing up ends when the vaulter's hips get to shoulder height. Note, the left arm still has not broken down and started to pull on the pole. As the vaulter swings up, it is important that they let the head and shoulders drop down underneath the top arm so the hips can continue to rise. Once the vaulter's hips have risen to at least the level of his head, the vaulter starts the pull turn. Actually, what he does is pull first. He keeps his arms in the same position, begins to break his left arm down a little bit by pulling back towards the body. As his left arm breaks, the elbow goes on the inside of the pole. He keeps pulling back towards the body as the hips rise. Once the hips are high enough, he's right on the pole. Then he decides to use a unit turn. The whole body turns to his left and he stays close to the pole, the hips continue flying up and he's ready to execute the flyaway. Here's a warning. Inexperienced vaulters often during the pull cut their arms to the left and begin a premature turn with the upper body. Don't do that. Keep your arms straight, keep that right arm straight. Don't move the arms out at all. Just pull back towards the body, let those hips rise, then go into a unit turn. Actually, a good idea is to turn the feet first. That'll enable the whole body to turn as one unit. The flyaway is the last part of the vault and will happen naturally if the previous steps have been executed properly. As the pull turn ends, the left hand releases the pole and the legs and hips start to rise over the crossbar. As the top hand releases the pole, the hips arch 
over the top of the crossbar with the head still being low. As the legs start to drop down, the head gets lifted up and the vaulter needs to make sure he keeps his elbows pointed outward so he won't throw the chest on top of the crossbar. Once you've cleared the crossbar, the legs drop underneath the body and the vaulter enjoys a long ride down to the pit. Note, never land on straight legs. Always land on your back so you won't injure yourself. Pole vaulting progressions are a cornerstone whether you're teaching new vaulters or trying to improve the technique of your more experienced vaulters. We really stress the importance of these. We start with three takeoff steps and the athlete starts with a very low grip as they're new they will be running slow so we stress the importance of the timing of the takeoff. Starting the plant at the correct time jumping and pushing the pole so the vaulter is leaving the ground as the vault pole gets to the back of the box. That sequence of timing is critical and needs to be learned right from the beginning. As the vaulter becomes a little more accustomed, they'll start to run a little faster, will gradually raise their grip. Once the vaulter has got to the point where they just barely move the pole to vertical, they've maxed out their grip height from that particular length run. We'll now add one more step to their approach run and start where they finished with their hand grip at the previous step. This builds tremendous confidence. All the principles of the vault can be accomplished from either three, four, and five steps. This allows each vaulter to progress at their own rate, therefore avoiding injuries. Remember, it is not important during this progression if the pole bends. In fact, until you get to at least five steps, we don't really want the pole to bend. We want the athletes to learn how to jump and push the pole to vertical without bending it. Sooner or later, they'll get to the correct grip with the right amount of speed and be on the right pole that it will bend, but as a result of a good run and takeoff, not by force bending it or trying to manipulate the pole in some, some other fashion.